If you need to scrape data and reviews from the official Yelp Fusion API, we'll show you how to get your Yelp API key in a few minutes and use it to scrape thousands of business listings from any city. To get your Yelp API key, head to the Fusion API homepage. I'll put a link in the description you can follow. Then look for this handy authentication guide link down here. And it will tell you to get a private API key, all you have to do is create a Yelp app that's linked to your Yelp account. So here's mine, I already created one. This is my API key you're gonna need. To create one, if you don't have one, just give it a name like test. These really don't matter because this is not going to be public facing. All we need is an API key to make some requests to scrape data with. So once you save your app, this will be linked to your Yelp account. So you do need to have a Yelp account in good standing that you haven't been banned from yet. So when you're done, hit save changes or create app. You'll get a very generous 5,000 API requests every day, which is more than enough to scrape a lot of data with. I scraped a bunch and barely went through 100. And here's some other statistics you can see. There's a developer beta program you can join. And if you're an idiot like me and shared your API key on YouTube, you can click this button here to reload it. So if it's ever compromised, just click this button here to get a new API key. Anyway, once you have your API key, you can start using it through the rest of the API docs and just put it in here where it asks for API key. So let's do an example with this business search endpoint. This is gonna let us search for businesses on Yelp, which I know a lot of people are interested in. And what's nice is you can fill in these parameters here and they'll auto-generate a request you can make. So I really like this API because for location, you can put in any free text address or city. You don't have to provide coordinates like with Google Maps. So that makes it a lot easier to get up and running. You can just put in any city and you can scrape all the businesses. Here you can put in latitude, longitude if you'd really like, though that's a little bit more advanced we're not gonna cover in this video. And then search term, you can put in any free text type of business you wanna scrape, like bars, restaurants, diners, dive bars, whatever. They have some categories too we're gonna to cover later on. The next thing you wanna do is change this limit to 50, as that's the most you'll be able to scrape per request from Yelp. Now in this little box up here, it pre-populated a curl command we can run with everything we just entered in those little text box, making it really easy to get started. It also has your API key in there as well. But you'll see it failed because they forgot to put bearer in the authorization header. So I'm gonna copy this and put it in my terminal, and then where it says authorization colon, I do space and then bear with a capital B, and that will give me back a response with 50 restaurants in this big messy JSON blob. So if you're a developer, you should be good to go right now and you can write your own code to access the API. However, if you don't like writing code, you can check out my freemium data platform that will execute these endpoints for you and securely convert the data to downloadable CSV files so you can get up and running in seconds. So check out the link in the description. It's free to try it out. You just have to pay if you actually wanna download some data. I can put in any query here like I did before, paste in my Yelp API key, and it will actually make the correct request without the typo. So I get some data back from the API and the platform converts it into CSV files for me. So if I scroll all the way down, I'll be able to see here under the preview, the actual HTTP request. So you're free to query the API directly if you just wanna use this tool as a way to kind of mess around and see what kind of data you can get back. You can see all the query parameters here that we provided, so you can implement this on your own code if you'd like. So let's walk through the type of data we get back now that it's in a more presentable format so you can understand how Yelp API returns data. This first column here is the business ID. We're gonna need this if we wanna fetch the reviews I'll cover shortly. The name of the business, the alias of the business, that's kind of the slug in the URL. We get the main image to it, so this here is a bar I looked up. If it's closed or not. We also get the URL to the Yelp listings. We can look up all the reviews if we need to look up other things and photos and a lot more information. We get the number of reviews left on Yelp as well as the average rating and the price level. This is one to four dollars. This is the phone number. Usually most businesses have this. I don't know why it's so trim right now, but you can see they give you a numeric format as well as a formatted phone number as well if you wanna call these businesses for whatever reason. A few other things that are interested are distance from the latitude longitude if provided, and then you get the coordinates of each business if you wanna plot them on a little map like I just did in this platform. Here we can see the street address in case you wanna mail them something, which is kind of clever now in a day where people ignore email, that physical mail can have a lot more pizzazz when someone gets it. And you can also see that some of these businesses are outside of New York proper, like here's one in Long Island City. I'm pretty sure I saw a few in New Jersey. So keep in mind, just because you type in New York, it's just gonna pick a latitude longitude and do a radius around that. If you need to restrict them to New York State, please restrict your data here based on what you get back in these columns. And these here are categories. This is just showing the first category for each business. So this one here is cocktail bar, one of them says dive bars. So I wanted to touch on this because the Yelp documentation doesn't give a good way to see a list of all the categories. 
Uh, I can change this here and filter it by categories. Instead of searching for bars, I can put it in any category under the categories field. So here in the documentation, when you go to the category section, you'll see that it says you can put in a bunch of categories separated by commas to do an or search, but there's no actual way to see all of the available categories. So that's why I suggest just starting out with a free text search like bars, and then in the response, you can see some of the popular categories here. So I'm gonna execute this again, but instead of searching for bars, I'm gonna search by category for cocktail bars. And I get the usual results that I showed you last time. One really nice thing about the Yelp API is that it'll show me the total number of results here. So it found 887 cocktail bars in New York. And what's great is I can actually see all of them. Unlike the Google Maps API, which only shows you 60 businesses per search, here I can actually paginate and download all 887. To do this, I increase the offset by 50 each time. So now it's gonna give me another set of 50 in the result set, and I can download these as a CSV file and analyze or do whatever I want with this business data. All right, let's talk about how to scrape reviews because that's one of the things Yelp is known for. So to get the reviews for this business, I'm gonna copy the ID, then I'm gonna go back to the Yelp Scraper main page and look for the reviews scraper. I paste in my business ID as well as my Yelp API key and it will query the reviews endpoint on the Yelp API. I link to the official Yelp reviews endpoint. You can see it on the platform or I'll throw it in the description as well. So again, you don't need to use this platform. This is just making it easy to demonstrate the type of data that Yelp will return in tabular format. So here I can see some basic things about the reviewer, a link to each reviewer's profile URL, which may be helpful. And when I jump to the actual business, I can show you that the three reviews it picks are actually the most recent ones. It's not really documented in the API, but if you scroll down to the reviews, you can see here, this is from Joan S. And this text matches, this was recently uh, published. So these are the three most recent ones, Christy P. And these all match the reviewers here, Joan S, Christy P, and then Abby J wrote the third review which was published on December 15th, and I can see it right there, December 15th, 2023. Another thing I wanna point out is that the text the API returns will get cut off. This won't be the full review text, so I can see Japanese milk, and when I search for it here, I see it gets cut off. There's more content that doesn't show back up in the API response. So this is not great, to be honest. It's only the three most recent ones and the text gets truncated, but if you just wanna do some broad analysis of a bunch of businesses and see what the overall review texts are saying and maybe feed that to a large language model, this could be very useful. And our workflow feature here can help you do just that. Look for this Yelp business search pagination workflow and hit import. Now you enter in your API key again, and you can put in any category or search query you'd like. So here I'm just gonna do cocktail bars again, like before. And when I'm running a workflow, I can enter in a list for any of these inputs. So under location, I can do multiple cities. So I'm gonna search for cocktail bars in New York, Miami, and I can put in a big list of cities, and this will run a pagination loop through all of them. So it's gonna go get all the cocktail bars in all the cities paginating through all of the results and combine everything together. So because that's gonna be a lot of data for this demo, I'm gonna limit this to only the most expensive cocktail bars. So I put in the number four and it's gonna restrict the API to only give me the most expensive bars. Now I click run and it's executing this remotely in the cloud and it got me a whopping 38 cocktail bars between New York and Miami. Now remember, these are only the most expensive bars. So I can take a look at this data and see if I recognize any of them. And yep, I can just tell from column E that these names look about right to me. So again, this is only 38, but if I remove that dollar sign query, instead of putting four, if I just left that blank, we would probably have over a thousand results in the spreadsheet complete with links to their Yelp profiles, as well as their phone numbers and addresses. So that's the gist of it, at least the most popular use cases I think you guys are interested in. Take a look at these Yelp Fusion endpoints. Let me know in the comments if I should cover some more of these, but I don't think a lot of these other ones are used as much. And again, you can query these endpoints directly. You don't have to use my data platform, but it may be useful to just get a feel for how these endpoints work. And I wanna mention the terms of use for the API, especially the restriction section. So you need to review this on your own with a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, I can't tell you what's right or wrong but you need to look at this. And one thing I just wanna draw your attention to is I do mention scraping or bulk downloading, what we were doing in this video, but for non-commercial analysis, which is what we're doing, that should be okay. So just make sure you read this. I think what they really care about is they don't want you to like republish this data on an app and try to monetize it on a website, but as long as you just take the response data and use it on your own private uses, I don't think they have any way to know what you're doing or enforce this at all. And also just keep an eye on your API usage so you can see I still have a long way to go and I scraped all those bars and restaurants already. So I think their daily limit is pretty generous. Just keep an eye on this. Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave some comments to let me know your thoughts and have a great day.